Okay, okay, guys. Welcome to the Makeout Talks. So my name is Tom. And now it's time to introduce you for the girls who come in to see. So, up in front of me, this one is called Dot. The one with this green bit on her tail here, she's Mia. We have Com. We also have. Yeah, yeah, there's Cat over there, and there's Compare that's just under the rocks at the minute. So we have Compare, Mia, Cat, Dot, and Com. No. <laughs> So, I firstly want to start off by telling you guys a bit about their appearance and how we can actually tell meerkats apart because they are all very similar. So, the way we tell them apart is obviously by their size, so some are tall, some are wider, some are thinner than others. But the main way we can tell them apart is actually by the stripes on their back. Now, what this means is each individual meerkat has a unique pattern on its back, and this is what we use to identify each individual meerkat. So like for example, I know that one of these meerkats, that one just there, she has long lines of light brown and then dark brown, all connected. Whereas I know for example that over here, hers are all broken up and kind of mixed together. So we can identify them that way. Now another thing about their appearance as well is their long claws. These are not just used for hunting or anything like that, these are actually used for digging and for climbing. So as you can see right here, they do love climbing and as you can see while looking around this enclosure, they love to dig as well. Now what we do once a week is we fill in all the holes that they have dug. This is for some enrichment for them and to give them something to do during the week, as well as for their own safety, making sure they're not digging holes too deep so when it rains they collapse. Which is why we actually have these tunnels here, just to make sure they have tunnels to go into that are safe and won't collapse regardless of the weather. So the next thing I want to talk to you about with regards to their appearance is their teeth. Now, as much as these guys look really cute and really fluffy, they do have really sharp teeth, needle-like teeth. And when we are actually handling them, as cute as they might be, we actually use a bird of prey gauntlet. And we can still feel it if they nip us when we are worming and fleeing them, just like you would a dog or a cat. So this is what they used to uh, hunt and kill their prey in the wild. And the final thing I do want to go over about their appearance is actually the black circles around their eyes. Now, these work similar to something you, I can see a few of you guys are actually wearing on a lovely day like today. So the black circles around their eyes function like sunglasses for the meerkats. They're not just there to make them look cute and adorable, they do have a function as well. So that is it, they kind of absorb the sun's light around it so they can see a bit more clearer, clearly. As the meerkats are from the Kalahari Desert, and I don't know about you guys, but if I was in the Kalahari Desert, I'd quite like some sunglasses. <laughs> so moving on to their social structure. So meerkats, we do have a very small group from here on the farm, we only have a group of five. In the wild, they can live in groups of 50 to 55. Does anyone know the name of a group of meerkats? Mob. Mob. So that's exactly right, so a group of meerkats is called a mob. So like I say, these are very small and some of you will be very happy to hear they are a female-led um, society, our meerkats. So there is always an alpha female and she will be the only one that breeds. Occasionally in bigger groups there are two alphas and they will both breed and those will be the only pups that will be produced that year. Now, you might just think it's the uh, mums that will look after the pups. It actually isn't. The meerkats will take it in turns to do what's called nanny duty. And what this means is they might take it for an hour a day to look after the pup before they switch over. And nanny duty involves obviously keeping the uh, pup safe, but also teaching it any natural behaviours that it needs to learn. So when meerkats are teaching their babies how to hunt, they might take a scorpion for example, bite this stinger off and release it into the tunnels for the baby to catch. Therefore there's now no risk of the baby being hurt and they've got a guaranteed meal in there. And another thing that they will teach the babies to do is, if you have been to the meerkats earlier today, you may have actually seen some of them doing it, and this is called sentry duty. So I'm sure you guys have seen meerkats, whether it be at another zoo, on TV, stood up very tall, hands down, looking about, looking very alert, just like she's doing now. And what this is, is they are looking out for any potential threats that could be a danger to themselves, the mob, or even potential food sources. So. What this means is obviously while in captivity they don't really have any threats 
uh, that can hurt them. It's just a natural behaviour that we like to encourage, as the more natural behaviours that we have, the better the meerkat's welfare is. So, unfortunately, when we do have a new meerkat here and they are just learning sentry duty, there can be a few mishaps, as we do have planes and helicopters fly overhead. So what will sometimes happen is they'll be looking about, a plane will fly overhead, they'll let off the warning sound, will all fantastic. So again, meerkats like these, they're not the favourite, but they are very good for them. And finally, as a radio presenter once said, how do you like your eggs in the morning? Anyone? Scrambled, anyone? Yeah? Poached? Anything like that? But our meerkats don't actually like them cooked. So we'll give them something that's like an omelette in the morning. There'll be some fruit and veg chopped up in a bowl for them. We'll also then crack two eggs in the bowl and the shell will still be in there. This is good mental enrichment for them as it makes them figure out the problem of how to get to the white and the yolk. And obviously they will still eat the shell as well. But it does make them work a little bit harder for their food. So another thing we like to do, which is why you might see some dog toys and cat toys knocking about in here, is we like to give them a lot of enrichment to make them think. This is so they're not bored, um, and you don't see them pacing around and things like that. They are actually really active. Which is what that contraption is over there. This is something for us to put food in, and what we'll do is we'll pop the food in there, they will spend time figuring out how to get it out, whether it be reaching into their paws, or spin it around until the mealworms come back out. So that is our meerkat talk, guys. Unless any of you have any questions. How old they are? How old? So these guys, because we've got them from different zoos, it is quite hard to tell how old they are. Um, but they range from ages of about eight to about three years old. So the um, Alpha Mia, she's the oldest, she's about eight years old. Um, and this one, the Dart, who's uh, making a nice little noise there, she is only about two, two and a half, three years old. So they'll make a unique warning cry. Um, Obviously I can't mimic it for you now, but they will make a unique warning cry which all the meerkats will be able to kind of recognise and they'll all scurry in. Um, they'll all sound very similar to us, but to the meerkats, it's, um, they're all quite different. Alright guys, well thank you for listening and I hope you've learned something. Thank you.